Let's talk about circumcision. Cutting off three quarters of the skin area of an infant's penis without his permission. Like, what kind of human rights violation could top that? I think it's the, the largest human rights violation on the planet. It's being done under medical excuses. North America, or actually specifically the U.S., Canada's rate is much lower, is the only developed nation besides South Korea that routinely circumcises neonates. It's a religious right for uh, Muslims, Jews, and some Christians, though actually St. Paul recommended against circumcision. There's even a saying in Deuteronomy of circumcise therefore the foreskins of your heart and be ye no more stiff-necked. But it, it makes a lot more sense to open up your heart than to cut off three-quarters of the most sensitive nerve endings on your body. And the original Abraham covenant, Abraham's covenant with God only involved uh, drawing blood or a nick. It didn't involve exposing the whole glands or the head of the penis. That occurred thousands of years later, around um, 100 AD, when a lot of Jewish men were competing as athletes in the um, Roman and Greek games, and they were done in the nude, and it was considered offensive to show your glands. So they had a little thing they tied on the foreskin to keep it from retracting. And what happened was that the, uh, uh, the rabbis weren't happy with these Jewish men passing themselves off as Gentiles, and so they changed what had been called Brit um, Mila to Brit Pariah. It was a radical change in the procedure where they cut off most of the foreskin. And very few Jewish men that I've talked to know this. It's pretty well documented, and it radically changed the whole situation. And then a thousand years later, Moses Maimonides and Guide to the Perplexed makes it very clear that circumcision is to reduce the sexual uh, se sexual sensitivity of the man. He got it. Uh, the idea in the late 1800s when Kellogg and those fellows were recommending it for so-called health reasons was basically to stop masturbation. And they were thinking masturbation caused blindness and hair and growing in your palms and so on and so forth. Very Victorian ideas at the time. So we have a surgical procedure in search of a disease, and there have been about a hundred different diseases connected with circumcision, all of which have failed to pass the test of time, from urinary tract in infections, which still gets play. Uh, the fact is that they didn't control for premature retraction, and that's one of the biggest problems we have. And that's one of the biggest problems we have nowadays, is that most doctors are circumcised, have never seen a foreskin, don't know how to take care of one, and they're still peeling it back on these little babies, tearing the adhesions. It's like a kitten's eyes, like ripping their eyes open before they're meant to be open, which causes a lot of damage later. Uh, the Doctors Opposing Circumcision Doc Organization has a little sticker you can put on the baby's diaper saying, I'm intact, don't retract. And mothers are constantly reporting doctors ripping back the foreskin, causing extreme pain and ongoing infections and often a need to circumcise. So this whole issue of premature retraction has got to be addressed as we now have a nearly two-thirds of the boys are uh, escaping um, circumcision and our, we have a large population of intact boys with doctors who don't have a clue how to take care of a foreskin. And there's actually little to take care of. It's, Preventing them from peeling it back or telling the mother to peel it back is it's a, a, a no-brainer. So we have this gradual increase in the amount of skin taken off from Abraham's original covenant to what's being done nowadays with the uh, plastibel and the other devices that are used. So we have a radically different surgical procedure going on both medically and religiously than what was originally planned. Circumcision is the only operation that's performed on a non-consenting child that has no medical reason. It defies all bioethical policies. It's 
grandfathered in out of ignorance and out of denial, uh, largely by people who are themselves circumcised and don't want to address the issue of what did I lose. In my own case, I was in my 50s before I even noticed that it was a problem or could be a problem. Sure, I knew I was missing a piece of a useless flap of skin, but, you know, it was supposedly healthier and so forth. When I found out that three quarters of the nerve endings were missing, and this was only recently discovered, only one study has been done comparing about 160 men in two groups, circumcised and intact, and found that the most sensitive part of the penis is the foreskin by miles. The least sensitive part is the glands, which is about as sensitive as the heel of your foot, and yet people still from Johnson and, and Masters and Johnson's uh, mythology, that there wasn't any difference and that the glands is the most sensitive. They didn't even know what a foreskin was. The drawings in their book in the 60s indicate they didn't. And they claimed there was no difference, but they don't have any data to support it. There is actually a huge difference. And I hear many men say, well, uh, I'm not missing anything, or I wouldn't want to be any more sensitive. But it's not about extremes. When you're circumcised, you basically have an on-off position. You either not excited or you ejaculate. There's a whole range in between. And I often say, why is it that women fake orgasm? And the answer is because men fake foreplay. Well, then why do men fake foreplay? They don't have the equipment to enjoy it. It's something they have to do to get the woman warmed up, but they're not getting any pleasure out of it because they've lost the equipment that would enjoy it. Someone's likened it to having a foreskin as like a second movement of a Sibelius symphony compared to the, um, the 1812 overture, you know, all the bang, bang cannons and fireworks. You know, you get from nowhere to there without the second movement in between. And those of us who've never had that equipment can't appreciate it, but men who have lost it, had it and lost it, who either chose to get circumcised by misinformation or had some problem that they needed to, they know the difference and they report about one quarter of the sensitivity that they once had. So it's not talked about. Uh, the culture is so um, afraid to talk about it until it got on the San Francisco ballot initiative in November of 2011. It's, uh, I'm filming this just before that. I don't think it's going to win, but it certainly got a lot of attention. It's on the table now in a way it's never been the before. The San Francisco ballot initiative of making circumcision illegal in the city of San Francisco, which got enough signatures to make it on the ballot and now has aroused the ire of all kinds of organizations uh, who see it as a threat. The likelihood of its passing isn't very great, but it's put the issue on the table and in the public eye in a way it never has before. Then we have another whole issue of, uh, as I said, it's a, a disease in ser or a, a procedure in search of a disease and all of the diseases that it's purported to cure from masturbation to epilepsy to um, schizophrenia to urinary tract infections or cancer of the cervix, none of those held up, uh, cancer of the penis, <clears throat> they no, none of them have held up to scientific scrutiny. The latest one is HIV AIDS in Africa. There were three studies done that were highly biased, seriously flawed, and they purport to show a 60% reduction in transmission from females to males. It actually is greater from males to females, but that hasn't been talked about. But the studies are so uh, confounded with other variables, they were stopped early, uh, just a lot of things that were done. Uh, there was big money behind them, I believe. Uh, they were clearly on a mission to bring circumcision to Africa. And as Dean Adele says, if we can't even get a 50 cent uh, tab tablet of tetracycline to prevent blindness or clean water into these villages in Africa, we're going to do a procedure like this, major, uh, a serious surgical procedure? I don't think so, but <clears throat> they been raising millions of dollars from the Gates Foundation and other sources, the flawed idea that this is going to stop HIV AIDS in Africa. If you just look at the simple numbers of 
Europe is largely uncircumcised, has a low HIV rate. The U.S. is largely circumcised, has a high HIV rate. How hard can it be to see there ain't no correlation? This is just not, in the real world, it doesn't make any sense. It, millions of dollars are going into this effort, and the UN AIDS people have been behind it. At the same time, they're fighting uh, female circumcision, they're promoting male circumcision, which, while they are very different on the outside, the, uh, if it's done to an infant, it seems like a minor procedure as opposed to a, a young girl having her clitoris either dehooded or removed. The actual neurologic damage done to a boy to be traumatized at such an early age and how his, he develops psychologically differently. And there are some measures you can, like uh, alexithymia, which is the inability to put words to feelings, is four times higher in boys who have been circumcised. This is a pilot study that a friend is doing and needs funding to do it larger. But four times the rate is significant and definitely needs to be studied. So <clears throat> we have all of these uh, competing interests. It's a billion to two billion dollar a year industry in the U.S. And if you follow the money, all the countries where it stopped, like Australia where I live, they stopped the funding in the 70s, the rates plummeted. It's been around 10 percent and you have to pay for it. Uh, in Canada it's um, a similar number. Um, New Zealand it's a half a percent. England they stopped funding it in the late 40s when their National Health Service plan they decided not to fund it. It stopped. So it's definitely tied to the the financial interests of those in the industry. And if we stop the funding, um, as 16 states have stopped funding it under Medicare, it changes the whole ball game. One of the reasons the rate remains so high, particularly in the Midwest, is that hospitals promote it. They make money on it. They don't have adequate informed consent. You just sign a form, you don't know what you're doing. Parents have no clue what it looks like. You never get to see it done. If you watch a video on YouTube, I guarantee you, you won't let your child be circumcised. The screaming, the looks that they give the camera are heartrending. And so, as I was, uh, my friend Marilyn Milo says, uh, babies are born perfect, let's keep them that way, or bring the whole baby home if you have a hospital birth. We have a perfectly designed genital uh, structure, the foreskin, and cutting it off is, to me, a, a major violation of a boy's human rights. And my guess is, that there will be lawsuits when these boys turn 18, that there's now adequate data to show that it's not, uh, there aren't any health reasons, no medical organization in the world recommends it. Actually, Most the right. Dutch Medical Association last year was the first one to actually come out against circumcision plainly. So as people wake up, as parents wake up, recognize what's really being done to these little boys, I think there's great hope that we will raise a generation of intact boys who are going to be much so calmer. We can protect a generation of boys and raise them intact and let them experience their full range of sexuality and not have to fake foreplay so their, their women aren't going to be faking orgasm. It's going to hurt the drug sales of uh, erectile dysfunction drugs, but we're going to see a generation of men who are going to be more connected to their women, who are not going to experience the dynamic of disappearing dads, who are going to stay with their children, who are going to be overall happier men and gentler men. It's